you're going to make decisions based on data and models, it's important that your analysis is reproducible. Now, if you're using Excel and you're copy and pasting things and you're editing data manually, that analysis is not going to be reproducible. Even if you take meticulous notes on every step that you took, somebody still has to read through your notes and interpret exactly what you did. Now, the best way to engage in interpretal research is through code. If you write your code, there's a complete script of all the steps that you took, and somebody can come along and just read through that code and figure out what you did and just rerun the code exactly on the same data set or even on a new data set if available. So how would you conduct reproducible analysis, reproducible research using a graphical user interface like Radiant? So suppose we have the following data available. It's sales for the ice cream store, uh, dates from January 1st through December 31st, information about sales in dollars, the temperature, the cloud cover, and so on. And suppose as an, as an initial analysis, we conducted a linear regression with sales as the response variable and temperature and cloud cover as the explanatory variables. How would I share this with somebody in a reproducible way? Well, one approach would be to save the state of the application. So when we save the state, uh, we actually save the data, any settings, any variable selections, any options that we, that we uh, uh, chose. All of that is saved together. We can share that with somebody else and they can took a, took a look at it and see exactly what we did. Now, an additional option is to have Radiant generate the code uh, that it used to conduct the analysis. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, how are we going to generate a report in Radiant in a reproducible manner? It's going to be through the R report tab. And so here on the left, we see an editor. And here on the right, once we click the knit report button, we'll see a preview of what the report would look like that we might want to save. So here at the first line, we see the words sample report, and it has two hashtags in front of it. This means that it's going to be shown in the final report as a title of size two. So if you've ever used HTML, it's the same as using an H2 tag, or in Word, you've selected something to be a title of, si of a certain size. Uh, this is a, uh, you can think of the notation here as markdown, which is a very simplified version of, um, of HTML. So if I just select the first two lines here and click knit report, we'll see how this text will be shown in the final report. So we'll see that sample report, the word sample report, is a header of a particular size. And if I wanted that header to be a little larger, I would choose a header of size one. And now we see that the size of the title is slightly larger. I can also include bullets, unnumbered bullets. If I go to the end of this line, you'll see that automatically there's a new star that's added, and that star is going to be transformed into a nicely formatted uh, bullet list. So another bullets. I can also add numbered, uh, a numbered list, another item. And if I select these and again, press the knit report button, we'll see how this would look in the final report that we might save. Okay. Again, this is all in a notation called markdown, which as I said, is a very simplified version of HTML. It's actually incredibly easy to learn. It takes you about 10 minutes. And if you go to the website commonmark.org, you'll see an interactive tutorial. And again, it'll take you about 10 minutes to get basically the complete understanding of how Markdown works. You can also include math. So I've, I've typed some math in here. Let's click the knit report button. After selecting that, you see you can actually get math notation, uh, which is quite nice. We can include tables in different forms. We can even include interactive tables in different formats. Uh, and perhaps most important, we can include uh, code that was generated from the Radiant application. So then here is code that was generated by Radiant to uh, generate a scatter plot. If I click the new report button, this is the graph that was generated in the Visualize tab based on the Diamonds data set. Uh, and again, this is completely reproducible. So this is actual code that nobody had to actually write. 
that was just generated directly from the Radiant application. It's important to note that the application must be able to distinguish between what is text and what is our code. So the section here is just text. This is additional comments that somebody could write around some type of analysis. Uh, however, the section here is actually our code generated by Radiant. So how does the application know the difference between the two? Well, our code is always uh, surrounded by three backticks, then a curly bracket, then R, and on the same line, also a closing curly bracket. And the R code chunk is what we call it, is going to be closed by, again, three backticks. So this section here is a code section. If we run that, it's going to recognize that as R code and generate the plot that the code is made available for. Right. Okay, so how would we now go about generating a reproducible report, reproducible analysis in Radiant from scratch? This is just an example I'm showing you here, which is part of the application when you start it up. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to delete the report and uh, start from scratch to illustrate how this works. So we have our sales data. This is data that I loaded directly from a file. And what I'm going to do as my first step is I'm actually going to make a working copy of the sales data. So I'm actually going to apply some transformations and then uh, do some analysis on the data. And one thing that I notice is that the date variable in the data is actually specified as a character and not actually a date. Okay. So a, a vector of strings, if you want to think of it that way, but it should actually be something that the application recognizes as a date. So my first step in the analysis is actually going to be making a working copy. So I'm in the data and view tab right now. I'm going to change the store filter data as input to WRK. So this stands for working copy. And then I'm going to hit the store button. Now we get a pop-up. It says the data was stored. Sales W work was successfully added to the data sets dropdown. Great. And there was some code that ran in the background to make that copy. And so if I click on this button here, if I hover over it, you'll see it says report results. And I click on it. It's going to take me to the R reports tab automatically. And here is the code in this code chunk, right? Again, it starts with three backticks and then R and then closes with three backticks. This is the set of code that will make the working copy and add the data set sales underscore work to the data sets drop, data sets drop down in Radiant. Okay. So we'll call the report my first report. making a copy. Okay. And so we can go ahead and run this piece of code. Now, well, the only thing we're going to see is text because the making of the working copy doesn't actually produce any printable output. However, if we go back to data, we'll see that there is indeed a sales underscore work data set. We're going to select that. And that is what we're going to use to make our transformations and do our analysis. So let's go ahead and fix the date variable. So let's go to data and transform. We'll select the date variable. And from the transformation type, click change type. And this data is in the format. The input format for the date is month, day, and then year. So if we choose as date NDY, we'll see here a preview of what the data would look like if we actually apply this function. And it now says that the date runs from 2015, January 1st, 2015, December 31st. Excellent. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay. So I want to add that or basically overwrite the existing date variable with the new, new version or the new transformed version. So I'm going to go ahead and click store. And at that point, you see that there's some R code that's generated here in the log. So I want to add that code again to my report. So now every time I run the report, what's going to happen? It's going to take a look at the original data, which is called sales. It's going to make a working copy, a new working copy. And then it's going to apply this transformation that we just engaged in using the data transform tab. And so every time I do this, 
uh, I'm going to make a new clean copy, overriding the old copy, and rerunning this um, this command to transform the date variable. Okay, so this is going to be perfectly reproducible. All right, so my date now uh, looks the way I would expect. Uh, I could do, for example, a visualization where I'm going to make a line plot, so I'm in data visualize tab of sales across time. And let's say I want that visual also to be in my report. So I'm going to click on the report results icon. Here is the code that Radiant generated for you. I also want to include the linear regression. Okay. And we can see that that is applied to the sales uh, work data set. I'm going to again click the report results icon and my regression commands, again, that were generated for me by Radiant, are now available too. And now if I click my report icon, I'll see I get the plot and I get my linear regression. Now, although this analysis is perfectly reproducible, it's not yet very good. We would actually want to add text that explains what the results mean. Okay. So any reproducible analysis that you produce, it's great to have the code. Again, it's perfectly reproducible. But somebody would also like to understand uh, why you did things you did, why you selected to specify the regression this way, why you needed to apply the transformation, and so on. So always make sure to add sufficient explanation and text around your code. And again, this is in the R Markdown format. And commonmark.org has a great tutorial that is going to explain to you exactly how that works. Again, it'll take you about 10 minutes and you'll get all the all the detail you need about how to, how to add text in various pieces of format, make it bold, uh, make it italic, uh, generate headers of different sizes, and so on. Okay, so now what we could do is we can again save the state. That is going to save the analysis and all the settings to a file that we can share with somebody else. They now have the analysis settings from uh, what we've been doing, for example, the plots and the linear regression, as well as the report, which is also part of the state. So somebody can see exactly the states, uh, the, sorry, the steps that we went through, as well as whatever text we've added around it to see how, how this all works. Now, an additional thing that we can do here is we can also save the report directly to a file. So we see here a dropdown. There's a bunch of different options. So the first option, which is the default, is an HTML notebook. We can also save it to a plain HTML file, to a PDF, to a Word file. We can also save just the report text and command. So this is what is called an R markdown file. We can save it in that way. And we can also save a zip file that combines both the report as well as the data. Okay. And the default is a, an HTML notebook which is actually a completely standalone file that you can just attach to an email and send to somebody. And let me show you what that would look like. So I'm going to click on Save Report. We'll see in the bottom right that it says Saving Report to a Notebook. Uh, we can call this what I want. Our analysis. Oops. Uh, our analysis of sales, for example. Go ahead and click Save. And there is our file. And this is a standalone HTML file that has the plot, some of our text. Of course, this example has very limited text and explanation about what everything is, but I'm assuming that you can add that on your own. And it also adds these little uh, buttons. So if I click those, it actually opens up and shows exactly what code was used to generate that step or that part of the analysis. So for example, here is the code that was used by Radiant and generated by Radiant as well to run the regression that we see. Okay. Now, some, some people that you send this HTML file will not be interested in this code at all. That's fine. They just leave the buttons as they are. They can just look at the output, look at the regression, look at the text. But for somebody who wants to see in more detail exactly what you did, they can also look at the code here.